This lens has been my go-to lens for my everyday run and gun shoots. During the last month I took it all around Bali and there wasn't one time that I was disappointed by its performance. It's fast, it's sharp, it's clean, it's beautiful. I feel like I really need to make a video where I talk about why I only shoot video on prime lenses and why I only chose to now shoot on vintage lenses or cine lenses as my base for my everyday and commercial work. But this video is not it. This video we're talking about the Nizi Athena 35mm T1.9. I got this lens from Nizi about a month and a half ago and I had time to play around with it, to take it all around Bali and I'm feeling good, I'm feeling prepared. So let's get right into this little review. I want to talk about the look first of all because to be honest if you're watching this video if you care anything about cine lenses the look is probably the only thing that you care about because cine lenses are very unique in their look and i wish i could say this lens is very unique but i can't and let me explain you i'm not saying that this lens is not beautiful in any way i think it's you know it's what lives in my camera on my everyday so it's a beautiful lens for sure but it doesn't have any specific characteristic that other cine lenses have especially the upmarket cine lenses there there's not any you know like cool bokeh looking or there isn't anything very characteristic instead this lens is very clean it's perfect like perfect it's soft it just looks beautiful and the skin tones that comes out of it. You can see right now, this video is shot all on the 35mm T1.9 at T1.9 by the way. Look how smooth everything behind me out of focus is. Look how smooth my skin tones are. This lens definitely performs well, but it doesn't have any specific characteristic. But I do understand why they did go this way, because it's more aimed to a wider audience rather than specifically the 1% of cinematographer they are sticking a very specific lens. So you can still get a lens like this and then ruin it in post with halation and grain, which is what I do. This is now also the lightest cine lens that I own, coming in at 800 grams. And wait for it, the most mind blowing thing is that they have lenses from 14 millimeters to 85 millimeters and all of the range of these lenses are the same size and pretty much the same weight a few grams of difference but to have a lens like this that you can put on a gimbal and then you change from 35 to 85 to 14 to 21 to be able not to have to calibrate the gimbal over and over and over again or whatever system you're using to be able to have always the same weight it's, it's something very, very cool actually. And I find that more lens companies should do this because it's just handy to know exactly, you know, be prepared for what you, kind of weight you need on the gimbal or be prepared for what you need throughout a shoot, I would say. The whole range comes in pretty much any lens mount you would need. I picked the Sony obviously because I only shoot on Sony and they offer frame. So you can use this on most mirrorless cameras out there like the Sony a7S III which I'm filming this video on. The filter tread it's 77 millimeter which means you can use it with one of the Nizi filter that I have. So right now I'm shooting on a Sony a7S III with a Nizi 35 with an ND two to five stops, I believe. Yeah, two to five stops and the black mist filter all from Nizi on top of the lens. And this is what the image looks like. Looks nice. I think it looks pretty nice. Obviously the aperture is the clicked, perfect and smooth rings. The design of this lens is actually very cool. It's got this nice yellow touches on it, which makes it very very unique and the cap has got the focal length on it so you don't need to worry if you open your bag and you're looking for that specific lens you know which one is the 35 which one is the 14 which was in the 85 you know you don't have to like pick up the lens you already know which one is what which was handy and the focus ring is a 300 degree focus throw to allow you to make those perfect beautiful 
focus pools. One very interesting design that this lens actually has is that drop-in filter in the back of the lens. And I actually haven't seen this before, but it does make so much sense. Especially to me for something like a black mist filter or some weird effects filter. I think this is actually a very, very cool feature. And I don't have any filters on me, so I wasn't able to try this out. But Nizi does sell filters on the side and they do sell also ND filters that you can just pop in and out of the back of the lens, which is great because this means they don't get dirty and nothing happens to them. You, don't, you know, you can't scratch them, you can't get them dirty, you can't get anything on it. Drop in, drop out. So that's definitely a very, very cool design feature that I think more lens manufacturers should actually do because it's, yeah, I find it very interesting. So I don't know. let me know what you guys think below, but I think that's kind of the future, maybe. One last thing I want to talk about is the minimal focus distance, which it's super, super low for such a wide lens. And it's just less than 30 centimeters, which means that you can get some pretty cool macro looking shot, even with a 35 millimeter, which is kind of unique, especially for a T1.9 35 millimeter cine lens. So if you do need to shoot very close up, this lens always covers that. And this is pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. I love this lens. It's my new go-to lens. It's gonna live on top of my camera. Well, all of this YouTube video, it's literally the perfect focal length that I always wanted. Makes me look good, makes everything in the back look good, and uh, I'm stoked about it. So if you guys wanna check it out, check it out in the link in the description, and uh, see you guys in the next video.